Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Three tips here. Today, what I have is a 39 gram button of pure gold from a recent jeweler's scrap refining video. And I'll put links to those videos in the description of this video. But what we're going to do today is we're going to repurify this into high purity gold. We're going to use uh, copper to import the gold with instead of silver. And what we'll do is use some uh, nitric acid that I have that has some dissolved gold in the nitric acid to uh, do this refining. Then when I get done uh, with the refining, I've got a little bitty mold here. And what we'll do is pour some tiny, uh, small gold bars with this mold and offer them for sale on my eBay store. Here we go. Here's the gold button from the Jewelers High Grade Drawer Sweeps. What we're going to do is put it up here on the scale. You can see it's 39 grams. What we want is a uh, an alloy that's 28%. So I take 39, divide that by 0.28. And what we'll end up with is 139 grams of metal once we get done with the alloy. So we'll take the gold back out, minus 39. That's how much copper we want to add to this gold button to produce a 28% gold alloy. I've got 100 grams of copper pre-measured, so we're going to add that up here, and you'll see that we end up with 139 grams of material. Once we alloy these two together, it will produce a 28% gold alloy. Now I'll transfer the metal into a melt dish here. And we'll go out and melt this up and make our gold alloy. I normally use silver to import the gold, and that's because I refine silver also. But in this case, I'm using copper Number one, to show that you can use copper for this process. And number two, it should produce a much cleaner refining because there won't be a bunch of silver chloride that we'll have to deal with. The copper won't form a chloride with the hydrochloric acid in the alkyl regia. This is time-lapse uh, of the stirring of the metal to produce a good consistent alloy. I'm using a graphite rod to stir it. I probably stirred it at least 60 seconds to make sure I have a, a nice smooth alloy. Now I'm going to pour this in some water. You'll see my inexperience with using copper for inquartation. I'm going to get some steam explosions here. I could have avoided that by pulling that flame back a little bit and let the metal cool off. I've had this happen before. Uh, copper has a much higher melting temperature than silver, and so it tends to do that when you uh, pour the molten copper in that water. Here's our Imported gold that's imported with copper. Looks like red gold, doesn't it? Pretty neat. We're going to get the tap water off of here now. And now what I'll do is transfer the gold to this beaker. Let me do it carefully here. I don't want to break the beaker. Rinse it down into the beaker now with some distilled water. Notice that it's like very fine uh, particles there. Almost like dirt. 
but that's good that's uh, not a problem that'll help us it'll create more surface area one little piece kind of welded to the bottom of the pan there we'll get that out now and add that to the beaker we're gonna rinse the gold now well, I can see some pieces floating there and we got some residual down in there so I better have a catch can down here to catch the gold as I pour this off as I rinse it I have made very fine pieces when it uh, hit that water like that and exploded Here's some of the fine pieces down in the bottom of this dish. We'll save that and put it in one of our sweeps. Here's our encorded gold. And I've got some used nitric here from previous refining. But this is probably going to have a little bit of silver in it. So since we're trying to take advantage of the copper not having any silver, I'm not going to use this. Instead, I'm going to add fresh clean reagents starting with some distilled water. I'm going to fill it up to about the uh, 200 milliliter level with distilled water. Now I've got 68 to 70 percent concentrated nitric acid. And we're going to add an equal amount of this to the beaker and start dissolving the copper out of the gold. Stick this up on the heat now in the back. And turn some heat on and let this react it takes more nitric to dissolve copper than it does silver so we may have to do a few additional nitric boils to get all the copper out of our gold this reaction is complete you can tell by the uh, lack of fumes in there I need to pour that solution off before I could do that I had to uh, empty out some of the silver out of one of my silver jars I'm filtering it out here and uh, I just came upon this you got to see this we've got some crystals growing down inside of my silver jar they look like needles it's uh, <laughs> not quite sure what that is I think it's silver nitrate crystals I want to pour this silver off before I add the uh, the solution from our reaction up on the heat there uh, this silver solution has already been completely depleted of excess nitric and so I want to get out of this uh, container before I put some more uh, solution that may contain a little bit of nitric in there to uh, to consume it all. this solution filtered off now I've got the jar emptied out and now what we'll do is reach back here and I'm gonna pour the blue liquid off out of here it's only gonna have copper in it but there may be traces of precious metals from the uh, gold so I'm gonna add it to this uh, jar of silver here and what this will do is two things it'll capture any of the uh, precious metals that are still in here uh, plus it'll uh, consume any excess nitric that might still be in the blue liquid that I'm pouring off all right we've got most of that blue liquid rinsed off of there if a little bit of the uh, gold goes over into the silver jar that's okay now what I'll do is I'm gonna add some distilled water And some more nitric acid and we're going to put it back up on the heat and let this continue to react while we're waiting for the gold to react up there let me move this back out of the way and again what I'm doing here is trying to consume any excess nitric that may be left in that solution here is a uh, jar it's full of copper 
and distilled water. And what I have here is the solution. It's full of silver in this beaker or this uh, flask here. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add this silver solution, this beaker full of water, still water and copper. And we're gonna start cementing out the uh, pure silver metal out of this solution. I'm gonna move this reaction out of the way now. As you can see, the silver starting to come out of the uh, solution onto the copper. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Bring this down and I'm gonna pour off the blue solution out of this jar up here. Here you can see our encorded gold starting to turn brown just like we uh, see when we encord it with silver. So now what we'll do is set it back up here on the heat. I'm going to add some distilled water to it now. I'm going to put some more nitric in there. keep going with this reaction. Here we go. We're going to try to do this all in one take. This is the uh, third hot dilute nitric boil. You can see there's plenty of active nitric acid left in there. But I want to get some fresh acid on the uh, gold here. Rinse this out right quick. Oh yeah, it's looking good, man. The gold is looking real good. Now what we'll do is add some water to this. and get some more nitric on there and then we'll get it back up on the heat and let it continue to react okay this will be nitric acid boil number four I've had six nitric acid boils this is number six this one was number five. Notice that it still had a touch of blue color to it, which means we still had a little bit of copper. We're gonna pull this down off the heat. And if you look, the solution is absolutely colorless. That means all of the copper has been removed. If I allowed this beaker with nitric acid in it on our purified gold to continue to boil, then what would happen is some of that gold would begin to go into solution from the action of the boiling nitric acid. All right, this gold in here right now is very close to three nines fine, just like it sits. No further refining is required. All the copper has been removed. And we can tell by the colorless solution that's sitting on top of that gold. During a previous refining, I left the boiling nitric acid on the gold for about eight hours. I just let it boil away. And what I discovered was that boiling nitric acid will put gold in solution. And I'm 
I'll get a little bit on the end of this stannis or on the end of this filter paper. We're going to put some stannis on it. And you can see there is gold in this nitric acid solution. Nitric acid only. It will dissolve gold. Now what I'm going to do here is pour off this hot nitric acid off of our gold. There's still a ton of active free nitric acid in here. So I want to save it and then I'll use it in a future video to refine more gold or to dissolve some silver. I'm using a Pyrex funnel here. In a previous video, I used a funnel that was not Pyrex and the funnel cracked on me when I poured that hot acid in there. Here's a look at our pure gold. It looks spectacular, very clean. Let me get this area cleaned up now. We'll use this in a future refining. Just want to move it out of the way. I'm going to move these out of the way. I'm going to keep this in the foot in the shot here. We want to use this. We're going to show you how to get the gold out of there. I need to get the uh, silver jar out of the way here. I don't want my silver jar in the fume hood while I'm dissolving gold. I'm going to be dissolving it in an aqua regia. Aqua regia contains hydrochloric acid. And so we don't want the hydrochloric acid fumes getting down in our silver jar and forming silver chloride. So I'm getting this out of here. Here's a look at the pure gold that's been encorded with uh, copper and then treated with hot dilute nitric acid boils. It looks really really good it's very clean gold right there just like it is but we're gonna go ahead and refine this into a high purity gold first thing I want to do is add some hydrochloric acid about I'm gonna fill it up to about the 200 milliliter level you'll see it begin to react right away from the residual nitric that's already in with the gold. I'm gonna add sulfuric acid, just in case any lead made it this far into the process. Highly unlikely, but I add sulfuric acid anyway as a precaution. Now what I would normally do is add concentrated nitric acid to form aqua regia in here with the hydrochloric acid. But instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this nitric acid that contains gold. I'm just gonna add this right into this batch and that's how we're gonna get the gold out of our nitric acid. I'm gonna add some of this nitric acid into our beaker. This nitric acid has gold in it and that is how we're going to recover the gold from this nitric acid. We're just going to use it in this refining. Any gold in this nitric acid will join with the gold that's in the beaker. And we'll be able to precipitate it out later on with our sodium metabisulfite. All right, that's about 12 or 14 milliliters. We're gonna put this up on the heat now. Let this dissolve. I came out to check on it earlier. And if you look, we got a whole bunch of silver chloride in there. And I'm like going, where in the world did all that silver come from? We were using copper to avoid silver chloride formation. And then it hit me. This used nitric came from a refining that I used silver to encourt the gold. So this nitric has got a little bit of silver in it. That's why we got silver chloride forming in our gold solution. I'm adding ice to our gold bearing solution to cool it down and to get the silver chloride to come out of solution. 
We wouldn't have had any silver chloride in here if I hadn't added this nitric acid that contains silver. Forgot about that. Just goes to show you how these things can sneak around and bite you. So, what's the best way to get the nitric, or I mean the uh, gold out of this nitric acid? It's not suitable to be used for gold refining because it contains silver. So I think the best way for me to get rid of the excess nitric in here is just add it to my silver jar. The nitric will dissolve the silver that's in my silver jar. Any gold in there will get cemented out with the silver and then I'll run it through my electrolytic silver cell and recover that gold out of the silver cell slimes. I was trying to show one of my viewers how to get the gold out of the nitric acid and uh, ended up ruining our batch of gold here that we imported with copper, but that's okay. We'll get this cleaned up. It's just most unfortunate the gold from the uh, copper importation was looking so good and clean. And then we added the silver back in out of the nitric, so so be it. Our gold solution is ice cold right now. What we'll do is filter out all the solids in there. The solution is still very cloudy. So I'm gonna put a new flask on the vacuum and pour the solution right back through the same filter a second time. Try to get it to clear up. Solution cleared up nicely after that second pass through the filter. Now what we'll do is we're gonna transfer the solution into a clean beaker and precipitate out the pure gold. Here we go, we're gonna precipitate out the pure gold with some sodium metabisulfite. Here goes their first spoon. This is always so cool to watch. Here we go. Bang. All right, I'm gonna add another spoon now. Here we go, second spoon. Oh yeah, we've got a bunch of gold building up on the bottom down there. Still got a lot of gold in solution there. Let's add another spoon of sodium metabisulfite. Looking for that uh, head of white foam to start forming on top of our uh, liquid. Oh yeah, I, I can tell it's, uh, I think we're, there it goes. We're done. We got everything precipitated out now. Ah, this came out pretty clean in spite of the fact that we had to filter out all that silver chloride. It's looking pretty good. This is a 20 minute time lapse. High purity gold settles quickly. If it takes hours or even overnight for it to settle, then there's a high probability that there are impurities present in the gold. Gold has been allowed to settle for about an hour. It looks beautiful. Notice the colorlessness and the clarity of the liquid on top of the gold. What we're going to do now is pour that 
waste solution off into a uh, temporary waste container here and uh, rinse the gold off and get it ready to be melted. Now I'll rinse the gold powder with hydrochloric acid several times to rinse all the chemicals and any other dissolved metals that still might be present off of the gold. got the gold rinsed off very nice now what I'm gonna do is add about uh, 150 milliliters of hydrochloric acid and we're gonna put this up on the uh, heat and just try to heat this up and maybe boil it a little bit just for a few minutes to see if we can get anything else that might be uh, impure out of our metal been allowed to boil in the hydrochloric now for about five or ten minutes looking very very nice look at that nice caramel brown color of the gold powder all right let's get that hydrochloric acid off of there and then what we'll do is rinse the gold until we got everything completely off of here All the chemicals will be rinsed off. Our brown powder looks just absolutely gorgeous. Okay, multiple boiling distilled water rinses now. Get every last bit of the acid rinsed off of there. Look how fast that stuff settles. This is some high purity gold. Very nice. Got every bit of water poured off. Now we're going to transfer the gold down here into a melt dish. Oop. Now we're going to take this over, put it on the melt table and fire up our torch and get this stuff melted. Right, I'm ready to start here. Let's see if we can pour some bars. All right, here goes our first attempt. Let's see if I can get that gold to flow down in that little bitty cavity boom there's one all right let's get this one out of the uh, mold and go for number two
second attempt. Bar number two. Oops, got a little bit too much in that one. That's all right, he'll be a fat bar. All right, let's get this guy in the water. There it is. Get set up for number three and then we'll be done. All right, here we go with number three. I'll thread the needle with the flame there. And that bounced. Poured it too fast. Alright. Let's see what we got here. Kind of a weird looking shape there. A little piece of gold fell off on the floor. I'll get that. All right, here's our gold bars. Let's see what we got down in here now. This one I over poured. Huh. Looks like a mushroom. Pretty neat looking. Let's see what this other one looks like. I think that one came out the best. Nice little loaf. And this one here, I poured it too fast. I seen it bounce off the bottom. But they look pretty good. Let's weigh it up now and see how much we lost during the refining. There's always going to be losses. Every time we uh, dissolve the gold, every time we melt it every time we pour it every time that we transfer it we experience a loss okay we started out with 39 we got 37.3 so we lost 1.7 grams during the refining i think we'll go with this one first i'm going to stamp three tips on it Let's see what the weight is on this one it's 5.9 grams of high purity gold. Let's stamp this up and then we're going to put this for sale on my eBay store. There it is. Not bad. I don't know how this is going to come out. It's pretty small. Not bad. That don't look too bad. That'll work. All right, this is the one that I poured too much in. Looks like a mushroom. Let's go ahead and stamp this one now. All right. It came out looking pretty good as well this will conclude the jewelers high grade bench sweeps repurification video i've got uh, some pieces of gold here out of it and what we'll probably do i think we'll take this one first the mid-size piece and we'll put this up for sale on my ebay store and see where it takes us all right, we've got uh, two more two more bars that I'll probably sell later on, plus the little piece that fell on the floor. All right, that'll conclude the video. Thank you for watching.